Hi, in this video, I give you practical tools to help you resolve review warnings for any project. In today's video, we look at how we can extract warning data from several projects, export it to an external database, which can be used for training purposes. Let's check it out. To export the review warning data to use in Excel, use Dynamo, and more specifically the bank package from John Pearson. Specify the save location and then run the script. For this demonstration, I am using a sample of three files you can see here. These are taken from the Autodesk sample files. Once all files have been extracted, we can commence the process to combine them in Excel. Starting in Excel, open a new workbook. From there, go to the Data tab and proceed to the Get Data button. From there, select From File and From Folder. Select the folder to which you have saved the exported Dynamo data. Click Open to proceed. Here, Excel is showing me that the selected folder contains more files than just the exported Dynamo data, so essentially I need to filter that information out. To do this, click Transform Data. There are a couple of ways to remove the unwanted information. We can filter by name. Select Text Filter and Begins With, then enter the required value. Here, all my Excel files begin with underscore file. So I type that in as my value, and the list has now been condensed. A second method could be to filter using the extension, and use the filter rule equal to match Excel SX file extension. Now we are ready to combine the information. On the content column, click the double arrows in the right hand corner. Power Query is now using the first file as a sample, which in this case is file A. Select the Sheet 1 tab and now we can see the data. Column 1 reports the warnings and column 2 reports the relating Revit category. Click OK and Power Query will finalise the combination. Here is the transformed content. From here, go to the Close and Load button. Choose Close and Load 2. Select Pivot Table Report. This will be pasted in the first cell. And then click OK to proceed. Remembering that Column 1 contained the warning types, we use this to create our table. Then drag that field into the Values box to return the sum total of the warning types across all projects. So, for all of the three projects used in this sample, there was a total of 53 warnings, of which highlighted walls was the most common, occurring 23 times. Now let's try Power BI. Some steps will be repeated, but we can use the visuals to greater effect. Start by collecting the data. Select the folder containing the data. Then repeat the transformations as previously used. For your benefit, we can go through these again. Use the text filter with contains rule to find the sample files containing underscore file. Alternatively, use the text filter to filter the file extensions. Then click the double down arrows on the content column to combine the files together. Select the Sheet 1 tab, check to make sure the content seems OK, and then proceed clicking OK. Our data has now been combined into Power BI and we can start to build visuals with that data. Pick a stacked bar chart and drag it into the canvas, then stretch it out so that it's large enough to see. Then click Column 1 which contains the warning types to set this as the axis. Then grab Column 1 again and place it in the Values box. This completes the first visual, which reports from high to low the most occurring warnings. To get the most out of the data, we can create another page, where we can create a second visual 
using column 2, which reports the Revit category associated to the warning types. The visual reports the most common warnings within the sample. We can see that walls and stairs are the problem areas. I can use these same tools to find out which areas the team is struggling with. I can use this data to provide adequate training that teaches them how to resolve and even prevent these warnings from happening in future projects. We can use Power BI to create compelling visuals such as the one on your screen now. Well that's the end of the tutorial. I hope that you learned something new and found that interesting. If you did, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any future content and I will see you in the next video.